This presentation will cover the life and research contributions of Jerome Bruner, who is known as one of the fathers of the cognitive revolution. Bruner developed theories on perception, learning, memory, and other aspects of cognition in young children, and he had a strong influence on the American educational system and helped launch the field of cognitive psychology. Bruner was born to Polish Im Jewish immigrants in New York City in 1915. His father was a watchmaker and he had an older half-brother. Bruner was also born blind due to cataracts and he had an operation at age two to restore his vision. Later in life when he reflected on that experience he said that the experience of suddenly ex of seeing color following the surgery guided his later thinking about how the mind shapes perception. Bruner went on to receive a bachelor's degree in psychology from Duke University in 1937 and then a master's degree in psychology from Harvard in 1939 and finally a doctorate in psychology from Harvard in 1941. He received honorary doctorates later in life from several universities listed here. After receiving his PhD from Harvard, Bruner served as an expert on psychological warfare for the U.S. Army during World War II. After World War II, he returned to Harvard in 1945, becoming a professor of psychology there. In 1952, receiving full professor status, and he directed the Center for Cognitive Studies at Harvard. He left Harvard to become a professor of experimental psychology at Oxford, at the University of Oxford, where he was a Watts professor, and then later returned to the United States and taught at the New School for Social Research in New York City and at the New York University School of Law, where he studied how psychology affects legal practice. <clears throat> and I think he was there for a long time toward the end of his life. Bruner's early research focused on studying sensation and perception. So at Harvard, the psychology department was dominated by behaviorists who followed this research program called psychophysics, which is the view that psychology is the study of the senses and how they react to the world of physical energies or stimuli. But Bruner revolted against this behaviorism and psychophysics and together with his colleague Leo Possman set out on a series of experiments that would result in the new look, which was a new theory of perception. So the new look held that perception is not something that occurs immediately as had been assumed with these older theories but rather perception is a form of information processing that involves interpretation and selection. And it's the view that psychology must concern itself with how people view and interpret the world as well as how they respond to different stimuli. Bruner's research also focused on cognition and how learning occurs. And he advocated for a holistic approach to understanding the mind and cognition. So one of the, the constructs that was important from Bruner's work is the idea of constructivism. So this means that learning is an active process in which learners are constructing new ideas and concepts based on their current and past knowledge. Another important part of Bruner's philosophy was discovery learning. And so this is that students are not just passive receivers of knowledge, but they're active participants in the learning process. So this is similar to other um, previous research by, by Piaget and others, which emphasize the child as this really active participant in their cognitive development. And Bruner furthered this approach saying that learning, that children learn through this process of discovery and inquiry. So you can see in this visual on the right, lower right corner, uh, this schematic that describes the discovery learning loop. 
where an individual would, in the physical realm, is observing stimuli. They then reflect on that in the mental realm. It goes through these abstract cognitive processes, and then they might experiment on that stimuli. This is where the discovery takes place, and so this this cycle or loop. Bruner also said that the ability to understand categories was important for cognitive development because when a child encounters something new, she places it into a mental category, makes a new category for it. This is also similar to Piaget's concept of assimilation. And Bruner said that categories can help people in different ways by reducing the complexity of their envi environment, helping them to identify objects in the world, providing direction for activity, and among other, among other skills. Many of Bruner's research contributions are important for the field of developmental psychology. So around 1967, he began researching in developmental psychology, so studying how children learn. And one of the important contributions was that he termed, he coined the term scaffolding. So this is influenced by the Vygotskyan notion of the zone of proximal development, where you provide support to a child who's learning a task that is maybe just above what they can do on their own, but is still within their developmental level. level. So scaffolding is, is providing different degrees of support so they can achieve that task. And he also built on Piaget's stage theory. Bruner agreed with Piaget that the environment plays a large role in learning development, but he, unlike Piaget, argued that the social factors, so parent interactions and social interactions with others, other children, other adults, is important for cognitive growth. And he proposed three stages of cognitive development. So these were inactive, iconic, and symbolic development. The first learning mode, the inactive stage, is during earliest period of childhood. And so during this time, learning occurs through movement or action, as when babies learn to walk or a child learns to ride a bike. During the iconic stage, this is during middle childhood, learning occurs through images or icons that represent or summarize objects or events. So when a child, for example, draws pictures of their families or summer vacation. And then finally, the last stage is symbolic mode, and this occurs during adolescence. And so during this period, learning occurs through abstract symbols. So for example, when students are able to understand mathematical functions using equations or understand metaphorical language, like uh, idioms such as too many cooks spoil the broth. So he proposed these three different stages of cognitive development, um, kind of taking Piaget's theory a step further and including more of these social factors, not just the um, child's own cognitive development, but they are within this larger context. In spite of Bruner's many contributions to cognitive psychology, developmental psychology, he is perhaps known, best known for his work in education, most of which he undertook during his years while he was at the Center for Cognitive Studies at Harvard. And he initially became involved in this educational research in 1957 with the educational debate that was gripping the United States following the launch of Sputnik, the first satellite in 1957 by the former Soviet Union. Bruner became the head of the National Academy of Sciences curriculum, curriculum reform group and as a result of this meeting with other high-ranking researchers in this area the result of this was the publication of his well-known book, The Process of Education, which was published in 1960 and has been hailed as a seminal revolutionary classic. It's been translated into 19 languages and it sparked this curriculum reform and guided policy for formation throughout the 60s. He published his ideas about categories and 
theoretical principles related to cognitive and language development. <clears throat> Another concept that he came up with related to this work was the spiral curriculum. So this is the um, idea that students will return to topics throughout ac their academic careers and they're continually building on what they've already learned as they continue to develop and grow. And so it's this idea that they're continually building on prior knowledge. Bruner was also appointed to the educational panel of the President's Science Advisory Committee during the presidencies of John F. Kennedy and Lyndon B. Johnson. And his work in educational psychology and child development has was is credited with him helping found the um, Head Start programs and early child care programs, and so he is credited with with helping found these these programs and in their development and formation. While at Oxford. Bruner's research focused on early early language development in in infants, and he rejected the nativist approaches and emphasized the social interactionist theory of language development and the language acquisition support system, which is counter to Chomsky's language acquisition device, which is the innatist idea of language development. And so Bruner proposed the language acquisition support system which is the idea that language development develops in the context of social interactions with those around a child. And so the social system interactions are key to their child's, the child's language development. So much of his research while at Oxford was, was focused on this language development theory, particularly with young infants. Then he returned to the United States and founded the Colloquium on Theory of Legal Practice at NYU. And while at NYU, he studied how law is practiced, how its practice can be understood by using tools developed in anthropology, psychology, linguistics, and literary theory. And so this picture here is a picture of him at um, NYU, where he continued working throughout his, his academic career. I've listed here a few of the selected book publications that Bruner published throughout his, his career. And so we've got A Study of Thinking, The Process of Education, that was that seminal work that I mentioned earlier, On Knowings, Essays for the Left Hand, Toward a Theory of Instruction, The Relevance of Education, Beyond the Information Given, Studies in Psychology of Knowing, The Culture of Education, Minding the Law, How Courts Rely on Storytelling and How Their Stories Change the Way We Understand Law and Ourselves, and Making Stories, Law, liter Literature, and Life. So these are just selected publications. And so you can see from this list how Bruner's research interests are quite diverse, but how he really has had an impact on cognitive psychology, developmental psychology, and language development, legal studies as well. I've listed here some of the selected journal publications which you can review as well. And this is again just a sample of some of the key publications throughout Bruner's career, but also spanning again a variety of, of topics, starting out with perception and um, educational psychology, developmental psychology, among other topics. Bruner also received numerous awards and honors throughout his career, including the International Balzan Prize, the CIBA Gold Medal for Distinguished Research, and the Distinguished Scientific Contribution Award of the American Psychological Association. And this page just lists the references I used for making this presentation. I hope you learned something about Jerome Bruner and have enjoyed the presentation.